All right. So here we are. Jeff Short here at TrueFit Johnson City. Super excited to jam, man. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. So super excited to unpack all this. Obviously, you are, well, not obviously, for those who don't know, you are the owner of TrueFit Johnson City. Dear, dear brother of mine, man, we've gone to what I would like to call a really great friendship throughout this whole experience, man. But, yeah, without a doubt. Um, just wrapped up an incredible fight and flow experience with your members, doing some yoga, a hard workout, cold tubs, phenomenal. How are you feeling, man? Great. Good event like that. Great. Yeah. Good event. Um, a lot of great feedback from members. They loved it. And that's all it really matters. Yeah, man. So, so. That, that points out to a couple of things that we can just dive into. First and foremost, man, like this community culture is unreal. I know your heart behind leadership and your core values around what you do is unreal. Like, where does, where does that all come from? Like this, this place of giving and life change and really, really caring about people's journeys, man. Well, I went through a pretty traumatic journey or experience and it's led me on this journey. And, and I guess like helping people and making a difference in their life matters to a lot of people. Starting the gym has really allowed me to connect with people I never would have gotten a chance to, you know, and see great things and do some good things. Um, events like tonight, pushing people out of their comfort zone was great. Right now we have a Special Olympics event going on behind us. Um, it's, it's been, it's just been great all around. Yeah, man. So, so let's, let's just take it back, man. Let's take it back. I guess where, wherever you'd like to start, but how did you, where did your true fit journey start? How, why, why did you want to open the gym? How did we get here? Yeah. So to kind of start from the beginning, uh, I was in an accident, a car accident, put me in this wheelchair back in 2018. I just passed my five year anniversary a couple of weeks ago. Wow, man. So um, I had a car wreck, put me in the wheelchair. I was in the hospital and rehab for about three months stint. It was, uh, it was a wild ride. Probably shouldn't be here now. Um, I died four different times through it. Tons of surgeries, all kinds of stuff, coma. It was, uh, it was a crazy event, but I made it through it, made it through rehab, I went back home from Atlanta. I went to Shepherd and, re and for rehab in Atlanta. And I got back home and I was a big workout guy before, but there, was, there wasn't really any gyms that, A, I felt comfortable in. I worked out in a few CrossFit gyms and I've got a friend that runs a CrossFit gym, trained me and he was great, <coughs> great guy. But it just didn't feel like you really fit in there when you're in a chair. I went to some 24 seven gyms. It was the same way. So we decided we wanted to open our own. I had a business partner for a little while on it and we were interviewing different franchises and I have a day job that I still work. I work before the accident. I work at after same exact company that's based in Michigan. Um, and then we had some friends that I worked with that went to true fit, coached at true fit. And then she introduced me to you and well, she introduced me to Bonnie. <coughs> <laughs> Bonnie's phenomenal. I knew this was coming. Yeah. Tyler didn't want to talk to me about opening a franchise in Johnson City. So instead of going to Tyler, I sold Bonnie on the idea and let Bonnie sell Tyler. And here we are, what, three years? Three years later? Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, we should rewind there. We should put some preference to that and your, your harsh words that you're having fun with. Um, so you reached out, what was it, 2019 when we yeah, started 2019. talking? Yeah. And we were at a very pivotal moment at True Fit. We had just opened, I think, like eight or nine locations in 2019. I, I was closing down franchising, actually, what seemed like right before, um, right before COVID because we were in the middle of a big, our True Fit 2.0 model. Um, so it was actually really interesting because you did reach out. I didn't just say no. I just said, hey, at this time, we're not franchising more right now. Um, thanks, for, but no thanks. <laughs> at that point, you know, we get, you know, and I often talk about this often. I, I, tell, I try to talk people out of opening a gym more so than not. You've heard this before than I do when people inquire about a franchise than I do try to hard sell them. It's a big life decision, and we want to make sure it's the right fit on our end. This, without a doubt, was one of the most incredible fits here. You're a phenom. But we weren't currently franchising at the time. Your friends were coaching. Shout out to Kristen and Aaron. We're coaching um, for Bonnie or maybe her facility after she they knew Bonnie. Sold this location exactly yep yep and for those who don't know bonnie she's uh our, our head of mentorship at true fit hq she owned a few locations she sold her locations when um when she got diagnosed and so forth but you reached out to bonnie directly and then yep. i remember this conversation with bonnie she goes hey you need to talk to this guy like he's got it he, he gets it and then obviously 
Yeah, two Bonnie conversations with Bonnie, and then finally, <laughs> finally, Tyler calls me and says, all right, let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, that just points, you know, Bonnie obviously knows culture, knows ins and outs, but obviously it was meant to happen. So, dude, I want to ask because your uh, – what's up, Rowan? Your, uh, your journey with your, your accident and so forth, like – the biggest thing that stood out to me right off the get go is how much positivity, even some playfulness that made me uncomfortable sometimes around. Um, oh yeah, I do it all the so time. Forth. But like, what was that journey like? Where where I would have, you know, I would have been self deprecating and negative, probably forever. And the biggest thing that stood out from you is your positivity, not only. Being become make this an adaptive athlete space, and you being an adapt, adaptive athlete going to compete at Wadapalooza and all these things. Like, what was that shift like when well, it went from like dark and heavy, which I'm sure that still comes up, but what was it shift to where you really started embodying so, that positivity? You know, I went I went through probably a period of depression, especially when I was in rehab in Atlanta. Um, super hard time in my life. It was six to eight hours a day of physical rehab, trying to learn how to live in a wheelchair. So that was super hard. And then the nights were tough because it was such a new experience. My wife at the time was with me. Um, so, you know, I, I probably went through some pretty bad moments then. And then when I got home, there were some pretty bad moments as well. But I had, a, I had a little girl at the time. She was just starting kindergarten when I had my accident. And day in and day out, I kept thinking, you know, how do I want her to see me grow up? You know, what do I want to happen to her? How do I want her to kind of react and, and live life? Because this is a pivotal moment for her, too, because she just, you know, I, I think about it. I went through the accident. Sure, I'm the one paralyzed. But now my ex-wife, we were friends, um, and then my daughter, they went through a traumatic experience as well. So they were dealing with that in their own way. My daughter... I just kept thinking, how do I really want her to, to manage life? Because life isn't easy for anybody. Life's not fair for anybody. It's just how it is. You get, you get a hand, you got to play what you're dealt. So I could lay in bed all day or I could turn it around and, and do something with it. And I was going insane laying in bed at home. So I went back to work. So I wrecked, <clears throat> I wrecked in August, went back. To work, I actually worked a little bit when I was in rehab until my job found out, and then they made me quit, turned off my stuff, because I, I'm in sales, so I have customers I took care of. I went, I got home October 31st for her Halloween, and then I was back working at my job before December 1st, wow. and then back traveling like March of the next year, so four or five months later. So that was twofold. A, I was going crazy. B, you know, life, not only is it hard, but it's expensive. You've got to have money to live these days. Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed an income. I refused disability when I was in Shepherd Center. They wanted me to sign up for it. And we had an argument, me and, and Shepherd people about it. Because in my mind, even then, I wasn't disabled. You know, I was in a wheelchair. I'd have issues. But at that point in time in my life, I was going to walk again. It was going to happen. So get out of here with a disability. I've since, I mean, this is five years now, accepted. That's probably never going to happen. It's probably not in the cards, but, you know, because I guess my attitude and then things that's happened since then, I'm okay with that. Like, I am 100% fine living in a chair. You know, I, I lead a great life. I'm now remarried. I have three kids, my oldest, who's mine, and then two stepkids. But even day to day, like, it's, my wife now talks about it quite a bit, stuff I deal with, and I don't complain, but again, I'm setting the example for them and, and friends and con people in here that know me now, and they see how I interact. So I guess I just think about it that way, especially my kids, and you know, what do I want them to see growing up in life? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, man, that's powerful. And I want to like celebrate you and kind of put you on the spot too, because that trickles into everything that you've touched and probably the ripples that you don't even know about, man. Like I, even when we've discussed, you know, when it comes to like mentor, like business mentorship or like what's going on in the gym systems, all those types of things. Like I've never once heard you go down that spiral that people have a tendency to do. Like everything's broken, everything's this negativity, right? Cause like business is tough, Every, life yeah. is tough in general, but business is, a, is, is, is tough. And I've 
through any of the, you know, unique experiences that you've been through and stuff like that with business, like I've never heard you be negative or like, I don't want to say that victim mindset that we, that I hear, but. I'm huge on victim mentality, huge on that because there's lots and lots of people, especially in today's world with all the turmoil that have the victim mentality. This happened to me. I'm the victim, this and that. But you know, at the end of the day, like I did this to myself. I, nobody hit me. The wreck was my fault. I hit a tractor trailer. So it was a hundred percent on me. So how am I going to deal with it? Be the victim and then, you know, ruin everybody's life around me or own it and make my life better. Wow. So it, that's, that's a pet peeve, especially people that have that victim mindset. And, and I mentor some people and help people and try to help them understand like, you know, yeah, bad things happen, but it's how you respond. It's how you respond. It's how you pivot, how you interact. You know, it's all on you. Yeah. Man. So you're responsible yeah. for yourself a hundred percent and I'll say it all day. Yeah. It sounds like extreme ownership to me, man. It's huge. I mean, and that testament, I mean, we, we dropped in for a few minutes before we got set up for this podcast and we were kind of like definitely taking in this experience too and that reflection of like, man, like of course business is um, super, super rewarding, but also like we said, super, super tough. And really that, that heart check, man, where you, you are doing this literally to change lives, which, yeah. which is huge. And like just today's experience, then coming in, obviously the Special Olympics event in here, like the way that you create a space for adaptive athletes, like the special equipment that you have in here, the people that you're training, I know that you've mentored other individuals who have had accidents and so forth, man, like you're a living testament of that life change, man. So I want to thank you big time. Yeah, we, we've got a, a, several adaptive athletes in here because, I mean, I really, and the, the whole point of True Fit for us in Johnson City, I know it's for you as well, but I want everybody to feel comfortable coming to a gym. I know, I know how hard it is, especially to go to a new gym, feel out of place, feel uncomfortable, people look at you. I mean, you go to any gym in a wheelchair, people are like, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. That's the first thing they think is, oh, this guy's in a wheelchair. How's he going to work out? And I feel like there's people that think that about themselves, where they have a larger body, or they have, we have a guy in here that's, you know, he's got some birth defects from, that he deals with every day and works out. We just buy some adaptive equipment for him. He does phenomenal. We have some other people in chairs. You know, like, we just want to be a place that everybody can feel comfortable coming and we're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. We get that, and that's okay. But we want to be a lot of people's cup of tea that they don't feel like they fit in other places. Mm. And mm-hmm. we have a lot of accountability because if you're going to come, you're going to come. Mm-hmm. You're going to work. It's going to be hard. But I tell any, anybody new that I help come in, you know, if I can do it in a wheelchair, you know, paralyzed from pretty much the ribs up, you know, what's your excuse? Yeah, so. man. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to hop into your story by any means, bro. But it was, it's been a big testament to me. Hop I away, got, I can't. What's that? Hop away, I can't. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a, that's another prime example of the, of the play he likes to do that used to make me super uncomfortable until I understood that's, that's part of his nature. But yeah, man, there's a huge testament to me. I mean, obviously going through this back injury, man, I've actually put myself in self check around your positivity often. Like it's been a testament to me where I'm like. You know, I want to get in that pit of, oh, I'm angry, I'm dark, it's sad, blah, 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 with this back. And I'm just like, you know, Jeff's story and so forth has been a huge testimony of how you keep it positive. And also, like, today's workout, like, every time I come down here, I look forward to doing seated workouts with you. And they're freaking tough, man. Today's you was, go so hard. Today's was tough. You got a little overambitious with writing the workout for today, I will say. But I tried to quit in my mind twice. Yeah. But man. I made it through. Yeah, but it's like it's another thing where where we got these limiting beliefs or, you know, anybody watching maybe or something like that. They have those limiting beliefs of not exercising or not doing the best like the most with what you have. And like every time I come down to doing these seated workouts, you're always pulling out new maneuvers I haven't seen and so forth. And I've been pretty conscious of the adaptive athlete space, but not, I haven't seen half of these exercises and so forth, man. And I mean, in the big picture, also, I think a lot of times I know, you know, the saying, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. You know, the flip side of that, it could have been better. Sure. But there are people in chairs a lot worse than me. If my injury would have been another inch up, I wouldn't have had use of my hands. I'd have been a quad instead of a para. So, you know, I'm like, I got to look at the positives and think of what's positive to happen. And, you know, I have full use of my hands. I've gotten quite a bit of movement back in my core and my trunk. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's all positive. A lot of hard work, but, you know, like I've got to look at it that way instead of, oh, I'm in a wheelchair. Mm. I mean, somehow 
you know, my ex-wife and I, we got divorced. We were better off apart than together. We're still friends. Um, we co-parent really well. And somehow, you know, I had a lot of limiting beliefs for a long time about getting remarried, what would happen. There was a lot of issues there. And I guess I'm a pretty good salesperson because I landed my current <laughs> wife, who is an absolute 12 um, two awesome kids. So yeah, shout yeah. out, shout out to Bethany. But that's also, that was also a beautiful experience because we had already built our friendship, man. Yeah. And I remember you saying, "Hey, I'm going on this date," and then now to see you guys and your your beautiful marriage and her obviously yeah. helping you run the gym and so forth and her all the things that she handles too, man. It's been, it's been, yeah, really encouraging for me as a single guy too to see your guys' beautiful marriage. And well, um, the thing is, like, bad stuff can happen, but it doesn't mean it's over. You know. Yeah. So yeah. life in general. Yeah. So yeah, and you're not a salesman, dude. You're a stud. You're you're a force to be working with, man. So so what do you, uh, like if you? It, I mean, I feel like we've dropped a bunch of like those tidbits throughout the, the throughout the way. But like, usually I want to ask if there's like, what's your what's your message? Like, what do you want people to get? I'm sure we've heard bits and pieces of it so far. But for anybody watching this, what do you what do you want to make sure the world knows? I mean, there's a million there's a million ways I can go with that. Yeah. Like an absolute million. Um, I mean, from fitness, fitness matters. You know, we're all going to get older. We're going to age. So uh, somebody told me recently, motion is lotion for your body. So fitness matters. But I mean, I think as much as fitness matters, a positive attitude matters as well. Because if you have a terrible attitude, you're not going to try to get fit and help yourself. You know, it goes hand in hand. So... I don't know how to tell people to be positive. Uh, it drives my wife, drives Bethany crazy because if she's in a bad mood, like just move the negative, <laughs> remove whatever is making you in a bad mood. Yeah. And your mood is better. Yeah. So it doesn't work like that for most people. And, and I get that. But um, I feel like being positive and being thankful daily goes a long ways to improving your overall mood. Come on, man. Um, and, that, and that helps everything. It's a snowball effect. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're positive... The, the amount of things your kids pick up on through daily life is just crazy. You know, your kids seeing you be fit is insanely good for them. Lifting weights and they see it as a norm. It's phenomenal. And then it pours over into work. You know, the more that positive attitude bleeds into work. If you're always negative and you have negative thoughts all the time, well, no wonder you're not doing well in your job or you're not as successful as you want to be. You know, you've, that, that power of positivity bleeds everywhere. Yeah, man. Everyday life. Yeah, that's huge, bro. That's a that's a big testament and like big big part of my messaging nowadays too is like health and fitness is is crucial, but it's one one out of three components, right? Yeah, if you don't 100%. have your head, your mindset, your soul, your you know, obviously your mind mindfulness and so forth, like yeah. health and fitness isn't gonna cure the whole thing, right? No. Yeah, man. No, there's there's some other issues that have to be on the right plane as well. Yeah, man. So always a dance with that. I'm kind of looking at a reflection I had earlier today, man, with having your team come down and getting helped out for this event. And obviously, the amazing event that we just hosted, man, like your leadership, like obviously this community is beautiful and you had people that were put into your life and so forth. But like, how did how did you create this incredible team where people are just down to help and be a part of it and excited to be here? I mean, honestly, it's a lot of luck um, meeting the right people. I mean, I they're, they are absolutely phenomenal. I've got a great, a great group of friends that are around, um, great coaches here that help. I mean, they help me run the gym daily. Without them, I couldn't do it. Um, great staff. So it's, it's a whole lot of luck being in the right place at the right time. But, um, you know, then I just feel like also it's back to that mindset. And people are around people like them or people are around people they enjoy being around. Mm. You know, if I was a suck on everybody all day long, mm -hmm. nobody would want to work for me, be around me. Uh, there'd be some real issues there. So again, it's, it's how you treat others. We have a core value at my, so I work a day job as well, mm -hmm. out of, based out of Michigan. You know, and one of the core values is people and relationships come first, profits will follow. And I've carried that over into this, I mean, night and day because i mean exactly so i think that's matters you know mm -hmm. you put people first you put relationships first you know the profits will come later but yeah. that's what matters more than anything yeah man. you know i've made a bunch of money i've lost a ton of money i spent a ton of money more than i definitely should have 
but I'm gonna, always going to make more. Mm. But, you know, treating people right and putting relationships first and, you know, creating bonds like we have. I mean, we've only been friends for three years, and I feel like I've known you for 20. Yeah. So, I mean, here, that kind of thing is what matters in life. We're all going to make more money. We're going to lose more money. We're going right. to spend more money. Right. I hope I make more money. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I guess just the relationships, the people I've made in the gym has just been phenomenal. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. it's a true testament to you, man. I know you won't. I know you won't necessarily say that. You're definitely humble for sure, but it's it's what you're radiating, big time, man. Yeah. I also, man, it's so crazy. Like you're the off, like the home office of your day job is literally my hometown. Yep. Like that's wild. We're in, we're sitting here in Johnson City, Tennessee, and that's crazy. You we're know, based out people, of Howell, Michigan. Yeah. And I still work for them um, in a full time job, and I I manage a good portion of the country um, in a technical sales kind of role. And then, you know, that's back to my staff. I've hired great people that run this for me on a daily basis. I come in when I'm here. I get a workout. They'll call me if they need stuff. They'll email me. But I'm not here mm -hmm. working in the gym hardly at all through the week. I mean, yeah. they do the whole thing. Yeah, man. So that's, that's just, again, the power of my staff. People I've hired, if they need me, they call me. But for the most part, it allows me to do what I need to do. Yeah, man. So it's, it's been phenomenal. That's, I mean, that's, that's true business ownership. Yeah, is you are in the business of empowering your team, job creation, and trusting your team, right? Yep. And you trust your team. You're empowering them. I know that you obviously you're empowering them, but it's it's one thing for business owners like small business stays small for a long time because they white knuckle everything. Yeah. They try to do all the roles and all this sort of stuff. Like that's a good testament to this incredible, huge facility. Our first legacy location. We can talk about that, but um, that's huge, bro. So thank you for leading from the front, man. Yeah. It's it's like I said. I've just I've gotten really lucky. I've had great people around me, so it, it just makes makes my life easier, and I can concentrate on other things that I need to do. Yeah, man. So, Amazing. and still provide a facility in a place that, I mean, it's kind of corny, but you said all the time, but you know, it is changing lives. Hundred percent. So, hundred percent, man. Cool, man. Well, I guess like what's so you competed in Waterpalooza not. Last year or the year before? The year before, two years. Two years ago. Do you have any ambitions or anything on the calendar right now? It's no. So subtly, subtly nudge you right now on, on camera. But I went pretty hard um, in the open, across the open last year. I got a pretty significant elbow injury. Mm. Um, and that, that really hampered things to do a lot of Olympic lifting in a chair. It just, mm -hmm. it's tough. And it's tough to compete in a chair because everybody's injury level is different. Yeah. So... I'm a T1, so I'm super high injury, and and you're competing against guys, and it's not their fault, but they're T12, or they're down to their hips. So they have their full core. Yeah. So you compete against people. Every single person has a different injury level, and they have different muscles that work. So they try to make it as fair as they possibly can, but right. it's almost impossible. Right. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer. Um, it's a great community, yeah. but... I do. I mean, I work out five days a week now, but it's more to make my life easier than a competition yeah. side of it. Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I would rather have people through the gym compete in whatever it may be and just go on the experience with them, you know, be that person with them, helping them through it, making fun of them when I can do something in a wheelchair and they can't. <laughs> so be in that positive light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the flip side to it. So if anybody in Johnson City is listening to, the, listening to this and they haven't got the experience to fit Johnson City yet, what would you tell them? Just give us a shot. Again, we won't be for everybody, but you won't know if you fit in here unless you, did, um, unless you try us. Um, give us a shot. We're, we strive to really be different than a lot of other places because we understand what it's like to not fit in other places, especially me being the owner. So, you know, that that's big for a lot of people and they're super nervous about starting but just come by and at least take a tour and then anybody adaptive in a chair obviously i have a huge soft spot for so i mean i give free memberships to anybody in a chair wow. that'll come in because i know how much it'll change their life by getting fitter and healthier wow man. Um, i've got one guy that heard me on a podcast about a month ago johnson city living podcast he was from texas just moved here and heard it Came in, he's been working out three days a week with me. Come on, man. So he's been, he's a phenomenal guy. Yeah, man. So That's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's, thank you for that, bro. I mean, you know, you think like, who's going to listen to this podcast about me? Like, this is a joke. That's what I think. 
Um, nobody wants to hear my story, but his name's Mick. He's an awesome guy. And he's like, yeah, I heard you on a podcast. He's been here like crazy. Let's go. So Let's go. You know, that's, that's the power. I'm like, okay. Yeah. These work. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. It helps and, other people. Yeah, not to mention that. The whole Trufy community, like, everybody knows who you are, man. And, like, your message and the light that you show, man. And, like, the whole Trufy community has eyes on you and celebrates you, bro, and what you guys are doing down here. Um, so I don't resonate with what you're saying as far as <laughs> I understand what you're saying. But yeah. I'm not a little nudge there, you you rock star. But cool, man. So that's for anybody that wants to, uh, wants to check out Trufy Johnson City. It's definitely one of the most powerful potent communities ever been in super inclusive high vibes you'll be celebrated there's th there's something for everybody yeah um which is uh which is really really powerful man so as we wrap up here man anything anything you want to leave us with no i mean i've i've rambled on about a lot of stuff um yeah just thank thank you is what i want to leave i mean mm. without you none of this is possible and you're going to be the same as me and, bl and brush it off but if you wouldn't have had this dream years ago to create the first true fit out of that tiny little space, you know, we would have never met. I wouldn't be doing any of this. So, so really the things should go back to you and then the staff you've created and, you know, that allowed us with Bonnie's help to be part of <laughs> true fit and, and really, really impact people. So wow. thank you for that, bro. It's so. definitely a wee thing, man. And I, uh, I couldn't imagine, you know, not doing life with you as a brother, but let alone yeah. this facility too. So it's been thank great. you for that, man. Cool. A lot to go. A lot to come. Yeah. So expect another one here soon, man. So thanks for doing this, Chef. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my goodness.